in about a week or so, a very dear guest to our hearts would be arriving with the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal. However, some of us would be so ignorant that he would not open the door for him. And others would probably open the door but would not honor him and would not do what's due to this honored guest in terms of respect. And the majority of us, with the grace of Allah, would do what is supposed to do. They will honor this guest, they will give him the necessary hospitality, and they will try their best to make his stay memorable. This guest is Ramadan, the holy and noble month that comes once a year. Among us, those who would not open the door for him, they are in great danger. And those who would not honor him, most likely they are not be believers. They might be Muslims, but they are surely not true and sincere believers. The Prophet ﷺ said, Whoever, whosoever Ramadan comes and a person is not forgiven and enters hell, may Allah cast him far away. This portion of the hadith is part of a longer hadith where the Prophet ﷺ was descending from the mimbar. And on each step, he used to say, Ameen, Ameen. Ameen. So the companions went up to him and said, O oh, Prophet of Allah, what did you mean by saying Ameen? And he said that Jibreel came to me. And he said, Muhammad, whosoever Ramadan comes and a person is not forgiven and enters hell, may Allah cast him far away. Say Ameen. And the Prophet said, Ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah, if Jibreel gives dua and the one saying Ameen is the Prophet ﷺ, do you think Allah would respond to this dua? Certainly, yes. And a lot of the Muslims, this dua fits them like a glove. Ramadan comes and Ramadan goes and they do not have anything for this holy month. They have no feelings for this noble month. How many Muslims do you know do not fast Ramadan? How many Muslims do you know do not pray in Ramadan? How many Muslims do you know who do everything they do outside of Ramadan as if Ramadan has no impact on them? Subhanallah. These people face the danger of being not mu'min, not, not believers. They might be Muslims, but they are surely not true believers. The second type of the Muslims are those who open the door and may fail to show the guest inside. So they open the door, it's Ramadan, hooray, but they don't do anything else. So Ramadan and other months are the same. They don't do anything extra. They don't go the further mile to please Allah Azza wa Jal. So they themselves may fast. They look as if they're fasting. So they've, and they've allowed the guests to come in, but nothing in their lives had changed. The sins are the same sins. Not fulfilling their obligations to Allah is still the same. And most of them see Ramadan to be a month of torture, a month 
of being deprived from doing what we want and love to do, such as eating, drinking, and having fun. So this is how they look and envision the month of Ramadan. Our Prophet ﷺ says, there may be people who fast and get nothing from their fasting except hunger and thirst. And there are those who pray night prayer. They offer Qiyam al-Layl and get nothing from their Qiyam but sleepless nights. This means that there are people, there are Muslims among us who would fast and Allah would not write anything for them. The only thing they gain from their fasting is the hunger and the thirst. What about the reward? They would not get a thing. Though they fasted, they're not like the first part, the first category who did not fast at all. No, they fasted. Yet Allah would not reward them for that. A lot of the Muslims think that when we do not do bad deeds, Allah Azza wa Jal is benefiting from that. Astaghfirullah wa atubu When you don't do sin, does this add something to Allah's reign and kingdom? No. When you offer good deeds, when you fast and pray, does Allah benefit from this? No. So the only person who benefits, it's you. And when Allah makes things haram for you, this is for your own benefit. And when Allah Azza wa Jal mandates something upon you, Allah is not benefiting from this. It is for your own self.